What is up YouTube fam? Welcome back to another Afro Tech Hub video with Philem Seni. Today we're going to be looking at the Lenovo EMC PX2 300D. If you can remember a while back we did a RAM installation video of this. RAM on your Lenovo NAS today. If you want to see that video click up above. That was a shabby attempt at a tutorial but we did manage to help a few souls out there. Although there were some questions that arise from that. What did you say? Although there were some questions that arise from that video, so if you don't know what a NAS is, stay tuned. Cue the intro. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Now to answer the burning question, what is a NAS? Uh, the word NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. What this is, is basically a computer with hard drive bays. Uh, what you do is you attach it to your router using a LAN cable. So the advantage of this is that you are able to connect this device or the storage to other devices on your network using Wi-Fi. So you can connect it to a computer, for example, uh, like your desktop. Uh, you can connect it to secondary computers like your laptop. You can connect it to your console. You can connect it to your cell phone if you want to. In certain applications, people connect it to uh, surveillance cameras. Uh, you can also connect your printer and you can connect it to other NAS devices. Uh, for example, if you want to back up or maybe expand on the storage space that you have. Another advantage of using a NAS is that you can connect it to the internet using uh, network sharing protocols uh, like your SFTP or your HTTPS, uh, which will allow you to access your data from anywhere in the world as long as you're connected to the internet. So now that we know what a NAS is, welcome back. So I originally got this on Bit or Buy, so you can see there's still some delivery stickers on that and some tape. Uh, this had to be taped up pretty good uh, when it was sent to me. Uh, we've got a six terabyte Pro Series uh, sticker here. If you know what that's about, please let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm not sure if that's the limit that it's rated at, but I've currently got uh, two four terabytes in this. So. I've got a total of 8 terabyte space, I'm not really sure what that's about. Uh, but anyways, let's continue and look at what's inside the box. Let's jump right into what's in the box. So first of all, uh, lots of styrofoam. So electronic equipment, you know, easily affected by hard knocks and bumps. So they had to secure that down. Uh, more styrofoam, I'm just going to put that to the side. And then we'll put our box to the side. So there's a, another box that contains uh, additional accessories and stuff so let's go through that first before checking out the specs right so let's get right into our accessories box so first thing that caught my eye when i opened this for the first time was the set of keys now you might be wondering why you need the set of keys for this device well it's really simple it's for security purposes and it's to protect your hard drives now if you look here on the side of the nas uh, let me just get that into better focus there we go and basically what you see here is that this is unlocked so you wouldn't want someone to just walk up and grab your hard drives and whatever's on them uh, they'd be able to access this if they put it into another NAS or maybe a device that allows a computer to connect to a hard drive so you can lock this and prevent someone from walking away with all of that data I mean you've got uh, terabytes on terabytes of data I'm talking like four terabytes eight terabytes of data that's a lot of data in terms of family pictures or anything valuable that you don't want someone else to have uh, so it's best to just maybe lock that if you are in a place that is not very secure anyways let's continue with our review so let's put our key on the side here all right so uh, other stuff that we got in this box are plugs so first off uh, not really interesting is your normal South African plug. This is your like three pin plug. Yeah, not very interesting. Uh, if you live in South Africa, you're pretty used to those. We see those every day. Um, but here's something that you don't see every day. So I think this is a US plug. Uh, it's got those three uh, striped pin thingies. Um, this is not compatible with our plugs in SA. So I have no use for this at all. Um, 
but then the choice of plugs gets interesting i'm not really sure which part of the world this is from uh, so this one is like our three pin plug but oh sorry two pin plug uh, we don't have a three pin plug here but uh, yeah this one is like our two pin plug but it's got three pins in a straight line so i've never seen anything like this uh, in my life i'm not sure which region of the world that is from uh, we've got one slightly similar to that one uh, this one is not in a straight line but it's also got three pins that are slightly uh, staggered there i'm not sure if you can see that i'm not too sure which part of the world the last two plugs are from but anyways let's continue so we've got uh, some booklets here first of all we've got a setup guide we've got a quick start guide important notices and then an installation and setup guide as well um, we've also got this slip from postnet which is when i received delivery of this about three years ago in 2017 uh, so anyways let's get started with the specs all right so right now we're going to look at the specs of the lenovo px2 300d it comes with an Intel Atom dual core CPU uh, with two gigs. So if you're trying to develop websites or maybe you know host applications on this, this is definitely not what you are looking for. This is for the person who just wants to store maybe pictures, movies, videos, or songs on their NAS and then access it from all of their devices. Uh, so this is what uh, this is basically for. Um, it, came with two gigs of ram i added an additional two gig ram stick so right now we're sitting at four gigs of ram um a bit of a noticeable difference although it's not really huge uh we've got uh, three usb ports here one 3.0 usb port and two 2.0 usb ports um, so it's very easy to transfer all of your media or all of your content onto the nas itself uh, it does support raid 0 and raid 1 which means that you can basically use both hard drives as the same hard drives or use them differently or separately uh, but the raid levels are whole subjects on their own so the nas also supports hot swapping so what this means is that you can take hard drives out as the nas is running it won't have any problems you can take them out put them back in uh, maybe let's say you wanted to swap um, your hard drive basically that's what hot swapping is it also supports network file protocols a lot of them uh, HTTPS SFTP SFTP and TFTP I don't know what some of these are but that's a whole subject on its own so basically network file protocol is how um, your network is interacting with your files or the access or the security that you have as well is affected by the network file protocol that you use so if you are not very experienced and you are now sharing this with the internet uh, through something like a sftp for example i would say be careful just do your research and just be sure of what you're doing because you can give uh, access to someone who's not supposed to have access to your stuff and basically anyone on the internet will then be able to access your files so be careful guys do your research all right let's get into the nas itself ladies and gentlemen so this is the lenovo emc px2 300d so um even though it's not able to do like your web hosting or your application hosting on this uh, because of the specs it is a heavy puncher so i can give 50 of my friends access to this mm. let's say that i want to give maybe my brother uh, access to the stuff that's on this nas but he's not here physically what do i do i then send him a link uh, that i've created uh, where he's able to access everything on this so we're able to share files he's able to put stuff on it i'm able to put stuff on it and on his side he's able to download stuff and i'm also able to download stuff so it's a really helpful machine so if you have one of these um, you must realize the functionality that it has uh, some people also store their uh, camera or the surveillance camera footage onto this so some people use it for that purpose and it does have applications built in to handle that function
All right, so we are going to start with the front of the Lenovo Nest. So the front panel, first thing you notice is this big, beautiful LED display. So uh, you are able to scroll through that using this button here at the bottom. Uh, the button at the top is for your quick transfer. So if my friend comes over and maybe he wants to share some pictures with me, uh, I'm able to then put the USB or his uh, uh, memory stick into the front of my NAS and then press that button. That is all I need to do to transfer everything on that memory stick or most of the stuff on that memory stick onto the NAS. Um, we've also got a power button here so I can use that to turn it on and off. We've also got uh, status indicators on the front here. Uh, so the first one is the system status, uh, the one at the top. The second one is a disk activity. And the last one is power. Um, we've also got a USB 3.0 connector, which is the one I normally use to transfer stuff because it's very quick. And uh, we've also got our locking or our key lock on the front panel here. Uh, so this is what we discussed earlier on. All right, so let's go to the back of the NAS. On the back, we've got two USB 2.0 connectors. I never really use those because they are not very easy to access and it's quite slow. It's slower than the USB 3.0. We've got a VGA connector to connect a monitor in cases where it's being used for video surveillance. So that's what we spoke about earlier on. So it's definitely able to do that. We've also got two ethernet uh, ports, uh, one gigabit ethernet port. Uh, you can use them um in combination so i think using them both uh, or use them as a failover so if one fails and then the other one is working uh, but i've never really had to use that function one of these is enough uh, to get you by we've got our power uh, port here or the port for our power adapter uh, it's a 19 volt adapter and then we've got this uh key here uh, or this is basically what you see on laptops uh, that wire that people use to lock their stuff down i mean this is pretty lightweight you would be able to walk away with this if you wanted to so again they give you uh, the protection or at least the security of knowing that you can bolt this down so that no one's just able to walk away with your nest all right so let's get into the hard drives that make this work uh, so let's have a look at that so i've got uh western digital hard drives i've got uh two four terabyte hard drives if you've got a four port nas or a four bay nas you can basically have four of these so four times four terabytes that is a lot of space i mean that is crazy i haven't even gotten i think to 50 percent of the usage of all of this space in about three years and i'm quite an avid photographer i shoot videos you know at 1080p i've got thousands and thousands of movies songs pictures and videos on this device it is crazy how convenient it makes life so anyways if you're looking to getting uh hard drives for your NAS I would recommend Western Digital uh, NAS hard drives I mean um, other manufacturers like your Samsung for example they do make hard drives uh, but I would recommend using a NAS hard drive specifically All right so the reason why I would recommend using a NAS hard drive is because these are spinning 24 7 in your NAS as soon as you click on that folder uh, on your computer it has to be accessible you know it it can't start booting up at that time because it's going to take a long time for you to get a response back or get the data back so this is always spinning so it's recommended that you get a nas hard drive because they last longer and have been designed specifically for this reason they've been designed to handle the vibration and the heat i mean they are quite hot if you take them out of the nas uh, after recently using them Although this is not the actual hard drive, so there's like a cartridge that you put the hard drive into. I mean, you screw it in on the side. Uh, so basically, that cartridge is then loaded into the NAS. So here's my other hard drive that hasn't been taken out of the cartridge. Uh, so basically, there's a release mechanism uh, that you click it into. Uh, so it's very easy to take these out. It's, it's not a whole lot of work. 
Um, so we just open that up. You need to first unclick this or basically unlock this. And all you do now is just push that in there. You don't even have to lock that. It will basically lock itself or basically close itself. And then all you do is close that. Okay, so now that we have both our hard drives in the NAS, what I'm gonna do next is just start it up so that we can go through the startup procedure, uh, go through the information that's on the front display and then hook it up to a router so that we can see what applications are on there and basically uh, how to use it. I'm not gonna go through the setup. That is a whole nother video on its own. Maybe I'll do that later on, uh, who knows, but anyways. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we've got our NAS and our router set up in our studio box. Unfortunately, our primary router can't get to the studio box. So what I'm attempting to now do is use this router as a bridge uh, to access the NAS. So let's see if that's going to work. First time I'm trying it, there's a first time for everything. Let's see if this is going to work. I'm not sure. Uh, let's connect our devices. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we lost audio on our video here. I'm not sure if I stepped on the power cable for the microphone at this point, uh, but I'm just going to speed this up because there's no audio to it. All right, so our NAS is now loading. It's about at 75% of load. We just need to wait for that to get to 100% before we can actually use it. Uh, so you see the screen is not always right uh, I set it up that way so that it doesn't use up as much power so it's not always as bright as it was when it started up all right so what we've done here is turn up the brightness on the camera unfortunately our bridge connection is giving us a bit of a problem it's a bit slow and it's lagging so I can't go into the settings of the NAS to turn up the brightness of the display but it's fine we've worked around that so you can see it's flipping through some information every few seconds so we can see that we are seeing our IP address I'm gonna hide that so you can't access my NAS um, you can see the date and the time and it also shows the amount of space that is used, the percentage, the free space and the used space. You can see that I've only used about 35% of the space that I have on this device. It's a really, really good investment, guys. If you have a lot of content that you need to store, this is a great investment. Uh, your laptop with 500 gigabytes of storage or a terabyte of storage is not really comparable to this. This is on another level, guys. I shoot a lot of content like videos and pictures. I've got a lot of music on this thing. I also produce music on FL Studio. Everything is stored on this device and I mean it's got abundance of space. We can see uh, an arrow next to the button that I was talking about earlier. So what happens when you press that? It just cycles through this information. So sometimes what happens is I don't have a USB or memory stick to transfer stuff between my devices. Uh, so I usually use this to just move stuff between devices. So I'm going to show you again uh, later on how to do that as soon as we go into the interface of the NAS. Okay, I'm about to take you through the user interface of the NAS now. So basically we're gonna enter that IP address that I couldn't show you earlier on. It's gonna take us to the login page where we're gonna put in our username and password. So each user is gonna have their own username and password. So the first page we're gonna look at here is the content page. So basically it shows the different shares on the NAS. So you can set up the NAS in such a way that people have access to specific shares and they can't access some shares. Uh, so you can administer it in that way if you need to. Anyways, let's go to the settings page so I can show you uh, more features. Um, at the top there, we have the name of the NAS, which is cloud. This is what it is, a cloud server. It's a model number, and then we've got our IP address there. Um, a little lower than that, we've got our status. Uh, basically, this NAS is telling us that it needs an update. We've got used, unused uh, space. That is to blink the lights if you want to identify, it's to restart and that is to um, shut down. Okay, let's click on status. So now it's telling us again that it needs an update. Uh, on the right hand side over there, um, we've got a few um, uh, details there like our firmware version, BIOS version, 
uh, how much memory we have and then the IP address again then we've got our date and time on the right hand side and then model number we can see our CPU on our drive temperature so I did say earlier on that the drives become a bit hot when you're using them so right now they're about 33 degrees uh, we can see our fan rotations uh, per minute and then on this page we can see our voltage so how much mem how much voltage our memory is using etc I don't really use this all the time so let's skip ahead all right so these are the overall features of the NAS so you can see there are quite a list of features there um, we've got stuff like YouTube uh, Active Directory um, we've got McAfee uh, antivirus so I think the, not all of them come with that so I'm not too sure if that's what the pro series was about on the box but anyways um, you can see that we can then configure this to uh, however we like we even have MySQL on there so we can build databases if we want to um, so uh, like I said this is quite a heavy puncher I mean you can get a lot done with this even though it's small and compact it is very useful and you just need to be aware of its functionality so here's what I was talking about earlier on so the 500 gigs for me is not working you can see that is already almost full um, here we've got uh, the NAS uh, which has been mapped to my computer you can see I haven't used that much space and then basically you have features also that compartmentalize or uh, basically categorize your data uh, depending on the type so if it's music photos or videos all right here's a practical example of how i use this nas so right now what you're seeing is me on my laptop i just finished making a beat but what i'm trying to do right now is put the beat on my desktop which is connected to my blu-ray player and the surround sound system so i'm trying to bump this track right now and i would usually need like a memory stick to transfer the track between the, the two devices uh, but you can see here that i just need to go to a specific folder on the nas and then put that on there and then when I get to my desktop, it's already there. So I can just click on that and open it on my desktop and play my track and hear what it sounds like on the surround sound system. Sorry, I didn't take you guys through the NAS. I mean, it is my personal server, so I don't want to show you guys what's on it because it's personal, you know, I don't want to like give you guys access basically to my pictures and stuff. All right, guys, and that brings us to the end of our review. If you by chance stumbled upon this video or you're on a market uh, for a NAS, uh, please leave a like if this definitely helped you and don't forget to subscribe. I'll be coming back with more tech related uh, videos or content and I'll be looking more into 3D printers going forward. So I do have a 3D printer at the moment, so I'm going to be reviewing that next. So please stay tuned.